Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Legacy Gambit. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we have some opinions, we have some questions, and we kind of just wanted to do a little piece to camera about how we feel about the format at the moment. Because um, just this past week it was announced that there would not be any emergency bans to uh, any of the um, formats. So both Modern and Legacy particularly are being impacted, but also Pioneer and other formats. And it caused a massive uproar uh, on social media and across the internet about the impact of, well, Legacy is now a lame duck format and things like that. And we kind of just wanted to have a chat about how healthy the format is, what the, can they do to change it, and just an opportunity for me and Sarah to kind of like air some of our ideas out see how we feel uh, after this announcement. So strap in, it's gonna be great. If you enjoy this kind of content, you want more of it, feel free to comment down below, like, share, and subscribe, tell people about us. We are growing every single day and I'm excited to kind of share our love for Legacy with you, even when it is slightly good or slightly bad and maybe slightly ugly. But of course it is not me. I am of course joined by my lovely co-host, Sarah. Sarah. Hi, clickbait title, I'm a flesh and blood player now. <laughs> Banned and restricted made me a flesh and blood player? Question mark. <laughs> oh. So yes, let us. I I have brought up Goldfish uh, to discuss the ban and restricted announcement. So um, there has been uh, after the Pro Tour, they said that nothing, you know, nothing was banned, and we're going to keep an eye on everything. And people were like, "What?" And in a weekly MTG, they said that uh, nothing will be changed, and the ban and the ban announcement of the 26th of August will remain. And everyone effectively on the internet lost their mind, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> and the first question I kind of wanted to ask the pair of us is, should we have had an emergency ban? Should the date have been moved? Um, or does keeping it to the 26th actually okay? Because it's only a couple of weeks and we can all kind of move on. So you kind of have to break it down quite a bit mm -hmm. because it's not just legacy that's affected no right that's so very true the the starting point is the the so if you're wizards correct right you're moving to this new form of bnr announcement correct you've kind of set up this new schedule for it correct you really don't want to be doing emergency bounce no because then people just look at your schedule as a joke right correct. and that hurts a lot of you know the way that you're seen in what you're doing correct the problem though is that because of the holidays that had to be worked around uh -huh. this ban was already at a weird place relative to the pro tour correct right which is why they didn't want to take any action before the pro tour because they didn't want to affect the pro tour makes sense now it's a bit awkward because that doesn't really apply to Legacy. There's never gonna be another Legacy Pro Tour. Oh, my Sorry, heart. friends. My heart. Um so that's not really a reason they couldn't take action on Legacy, but I suppose if they thought that both Legacy and Modern were close, they would want to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Right? That makes sense. Yep. And then the following week you can't do anything because you're on holiday. Yeah. Sure. Um but now every week since then. It kind of feels like it's a mistake. I mean, yes. This is what... Uh, yeah, this is kind of how we all feel. My... I understand why they didn't move it, folks. Now, come at us in the comments. You know, we, we appreciate the engagement. But I understand why they didn't move it. Because they're kind of... They're sort of... This is it. They've said this is the date. And I feel for Legacy, that's fine yes do we have a bit of a lame duck format for a few weeks yes but have we d had that before yes this is you know this this is not a this is not new like maybe th this number hasn't been this high but we have been in periods where there is definitely a dominant deck or a deck that what think of oko think of um uh, I mean, Oko was probably the closest comparison. Uh, Astrolabe hmm. time, you know, even if you go back to periods like uh, Dick Through Time, Treasure Cruise, uh, there are periods where there has been one dominant deck. Um, I would say that 
it's maybe not to these numbers, but it's definitely had that period. I understand why they didn't change. Why they didn't change? Do I agree with it? No. I think they should have probably done it at the the BNR after the the BNR where they said there was no changes. We should have had that then, uh, because I think what is going to happen is they're going to ban grief, folks. Mm-hmm. We know this is the problem. Um, there is, you know, I think that's the main thing. I feel like that is the the general consensus amongst players that grief is an issue. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring up Reanimator. You know, we'll address the elephant in the room. You know, this card, folks, is very, very powerful. Very, yep. very powerful, and one that I think will continue seeing play for as long as it is legal. It is very good. Um. I think as well, it is just, you know, this deck is just good. The question now is, though, Sarah, what do we do now? Well, like- yeah, this is the thing that really kind of is worrying long term. Like, right. if anything is worrying long term out of this, it's the fact that the reasoning for a non ban of grief was they had time where there's no major events, <laughs> right? Yes. The- the quote that everyone's got up in arms about because now we're facing like multiple events we've had events be cancelled yes uh nlg madison people have lost all enthusiasm it feels like correct and everyone was really really excited for legacy at that event Mm -hmm. and it starts to get to the point where it's like okay so wizards the only logical inference from that is the only event that wizards think is a major event is eternal weekend correct and i don't think that's good i think that's really really out of step with the player base yeah 100 percent. like they for me um this is something i also agree with 100 percent. is i think that's when when whenever we've had a legacy discussion i remember post eternal weekend they were like you know oh we saw there was a lot of data coming out of eternal weekend we evaluated it all i don't think they look at the data for say the nrgs the scgs for seasons you know to, to the same level of magic and, and i don't blame them honestly like there's only a handful of people who look at the ban and restricted announcement there's only so much data that you can get access to i get it but be honest about that and I think this is kind of a, a bit of an indictment for them and saying, you know, there's no major events. Like, we have Gen Con. Gen Con, the Legacy event is actually bananas. Set. Like, it's absolute bananas <laughs> what you can get at Gen Con for playing Legacy. And, like, even like that, I think that's for me is where you lose that confidence. And then I go, well, what now? But I also think that players, once they have made action, we will just go back to kind of what we dealt with and we move on and that's not to say that you know there'll be trust lost but i think there will be some bounce back ability and people will won't have it won't be as visceral in like three months six months as it is now which i understand and uh, that's not to say i'm not being like a wizard shill or anything like that i'm just saying that we will adapt we always do players always adapt p players you know and Folks, I'm going to say it. I'm going to piece the camera to you guys now. If you are not enjoying playing Magic, you literally can do whatever you want. There is no one forcing you to play Magic. There is no one telling you to play Magic. Like, the closest thing is if you are making content. And that is actually, I I feel for those people. But even content creators will find ways around it. Those content creators will find ways to create that content for them. But... So my legacy players, take a break, please. If you have the opportunity, it's summer for God's sake, go outside. If you are not enjoying playing Magic, why are you playing Magic? I mean, I'm straight up not. I mean, <laughs> Which is I mean, weird because I feel like in the space of the last few weeks, I've gone from like dedicated and grinding competitive Magic to huh. not wanting to play it at all. And that's fine. Um, that's fine like i don't see that as a major like you know yes there will be some correlation between the format and players not playing i am a perfect example of this i saw my deck not be even though it is the top five deck at the moment in monorail prison we love that um but i i have no events right now that i am preparing for a tournament like 
this for me is a period where I'm like, you know what? I can take a break from Legacy and go play Vintage. Vintage, folks, a lot of fun. Go play Vintage. Kindly recommend Vintage at the moment. Um, but you don't have to play. Like, no one's forcing you to play. And I know that some, that might annoy some people, but, like, unless you're, you know, yes, the people who have tournaments, yes, it's annoying to test right now. I 100% get you. I vibe with that. I vibe with that sentiment, 100%. But you would have thought yesterday's announcement on the internet felt that Magic was dying. Like, mm -hmm. that's how it felt. The lamenting of the format, yes. Legacy is definitely the... In the time I played Legacy, Sarah, this is probably the worst it's ever been. And I played through Initiative. I played through Red and Six. I played through Oko. I played through Dreadhorn Arcanist. Arkham's okay. Astrolabe. <laughs> like, I'm going to make the point that when you say I played through Initiative... You were the initiative. I was, and I had a <laughs> folks. I had a, I had a great time. That was an issue, and I get that. But a lot of people during that time also just adapted. People played more removal. People figured out other ways to de deal with it. And I felt honestly, you know what? Actually, I'll put my hand on heart. Says until Psychic Frog got printed in for the Reanimator deck and general like Delver decks, I felt that Scaminator was. At least you could attack it. There were ways to attack the deck. Yes, yeah. it had this juke, but everyone had figured out the juke and people had more removal for Doffy Voidwalkers and things like that. As now with Frog, and Frog being both a discard outlet and a threat in itself, you're just like, I can't kill it. I can't, you know. Now everyone's playing like, you know, very targeted hate for the deck. You know, I remember seeing Eco Baronin talk about like cards you should put in the sideboard. It's like Coffin Purge as like a one mana kill target black creature. For me, I am at the stage now where I get it, I understand, but I also don't mind just sitting this one out until the 26th comes. It's not that long. We can literally wait a month. It's August, folks. Go on holiday. Do anything else. What's really surprising me, though, is the. What this implies for modern and for the upcoming RCQ season? Yeah, that's I feel um, worse for them if anything. Yeah, but it's the fact that even that won't make them move. And if they were going to no. move on one format, they would move on both. Correct. Because at that point, you may as well. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's very weird. And mm -hmm. I feel like if you're a legacy player, you often exist kind of in a legacy bubble. Correct. And I think it's easy for us to kind of get in our own heads about it. Yeah, it makes sense. But it does just feel like we're so disconnected that I can't tell what Wizards' thought process is yeah. anymore. Um, I, I agree with that. speculating on it almost worthless, really. No, um, I, I get you. So one thing I was quite passionate about for a long time is having maybe like a legacy format panel. The issue there is, as well is that if you have a legacy format panel, is then who do we believe or who do we give that responsibility to to be the custodian of a format um mm -hmm. because imagine if we had a format panel and then this happened those people will be hounded why didn't you do anything why did this not happen but also then i would you know counter that oh well, there is probably more chat and dynamicism and things like that it also doesn't help and again i love daybreak shout out daybreak that the api of all the deck lists being published has been cut back so we don't mm -hmm. see as much data as we did but I still think, hand on heart, Sarah, that there are decks out there that can still play Legacy even in this metagame. The showcase mm -hmm. was not 100% reanimator. It was like 40%, which is a lot. But in a 30-player tournament, I am not surprised by that, those high-level numbers. Mm -hmm. And second place went to Death and Taxes. So, Shout out to XJ Cloud. Um I, I, I want to make a couple comments on that, because I was following the showcase decently closely. Yeah. Number one, it's XJ. XJ is built different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, skilled. Pilot diff, pilot diff. But number two, like, I feel like a lot of the decks that were coming in to that showcase that weren't rescam yeah was so heavily targeting rescam correct and we still had like free rescam in the top eight. yeah no i i, I... Is bad no it's, right? it is bad but i also remember times when delver was like three or four of the top eight. and like yeah. people like people i mean people do moan about delver being at the top of the pile but delver is okay being at the top of the food chain 
for me, I don't mind be Delver being at the top of the food chain at like 15% of the metagame, because it should be. Because the Delver Wasteland Days deck should be the top of the food chain. I don't care what anyone says. That's the deck that should be. The police, this is effective, the folks. I hate to break it to you. This deck is the police of the format, all right? If you can't beat Delver, I don't know what you're doing. All right, unless you're absolutely bonkers like Doomsday, where is Doomsday right now here? All right, like I don't want to tell you, but there are Sarah. I will say this: it, the couple of other events that have happened. So I think the SCG that happened, Painter has started doing well. El Drazi has made a comeback. Post is doing very like there are decks that are managing through this meta game. Yeah. So it's not yeah. to say that everyone's playing Scaminator and it's all Scaminator mirrors, which probably is to some extent. But there are players like. You know, the fact that people are still playing control. Like, there are people playing decks. There are people still s sorting stuff out. And I think that if you are a legacy player and you're trying to adapt, I feel like that is still the, the modus operandi until this happens. Or you take a step back and go, you know what, I'm going to play something else, do something else, and just, yeah. you know, do that. And I think a, I think a lot of players, uh, me and you included, Sarah, that need to have a conversation with themselves about how they approach playing magic. You know, I know the grinders get a bit of flack, but the modo grinders also are trying to play to win. And they're trying to play the best deck that's in front of them. And honestly, I don't blame them. So if you're a magic grinder, Sarah, and you're trying to win challenges and, you know, qualify for the mocks or whatever, this <laughs> format's incredible. Yeah, if I was going to a modern RCQ and I had access to it, I would be registering that I do. 100%! And, like, yeah. there's no... It does make things a lot simpler. It does make things a lot more boring. I mean, though, I, I get you. I remember when Initiative and Delver were the two best things during that time. Everyone just, just yeah. was a two-deck format. So you either played Initiative or you played Delver, or you played decks that beat either Initiative or Delver. I want to move on slightly, Sarah, to... Okay, 26th of August comes. <laughs> we're waiting. All right, it's four in the afternoon for us when it comes out. And they ban grief. Yep. Do they just ban grief? I think that's the smartest thing to do. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people are calling for, like, additional bans. Yes. The issue is the pressure that grief has on the format, I think needs to... We need to see what happens when that pressure is removed. Correct before we take further action. Yeah. It could turn out that Nardu is just, like, too broken for the format. For it Legacy? Could, or for it could be. It doesn't country? feel it right now, no. because, like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you remove Grief and you remove a couple other things, and then suddenly we're just modern now, but in a couple months, yeah. that's just as painful, right? Okay. So I really feel like they should remove the minimum and then go in and just see what happens right just take out that i still think rescan will actually be a good deck it'll just be different we we'll might just go back more... to the old back we'll just go back to the old demir mid-range version from like a year ago yeah i mean what which was, was, which was about... a good deck that was a good deck i mean i think what was interesting about the showcase it didn't reach top eight but a couple people did register like demir delver yeah but I do think if you take grief, let, let, look, let's get this up. If you take grief out of this equation, folks, Psychic Frog is still here. Heck, Orcish Bone Masters gets back in. Doffy Voidwalker still gets back in. Like, there's a bunch of things that this deck is still doing. I think Shrimp Shack will become much more of a thing. What Shrimp Shack? Okay, right, right, right. We're going to talk about Shrimp Shack because this is going to be fun. Okay, um, tell me, tell me about Shrimp Shrimp Shack is kind of like going under the radar at the minute. Can um, I even find this deck? Most, it won't. You won't see it oh. on Goldfish. So it's mostly like something that like Jarvis, uh, Mister UC, Icada, uh, Lalo, and a couple other people have been working on in the background. Are we giving away um, trade secrets, Sarah? <laughs> no, no, no. They no, keep no. winning. They keep winning with it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty out there at this point. Um, but it's essentially like a non-grief Psychic Frog deck. Yeah. Uh, it kind of plays like a blue-black mid-range thing. They get to play Tamiyo. Ooh! It's a very, very good Tamiyo deck. Yeah, yeah, this is a very good Tamiyo um, deck. 
They just get to play a bunch of really annoying cards. Just like good they mid-range, get... just like good mid-range cards. Yeah, like you just got like Psychic Frog with a Bloom Command. You've got like Oro. Ah! You get to grind. It's like salt. Salt. It's like the old Saltai deck. It's like the old Saltai scam deck, but without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without the scam, though, it's just like a Saltai tempo list that feels really, really. Good. Yeah. I mean, maybe tempo's wrong. Like, maybe it's a bit more of a controlly list that's just like. Well, you have as soon as you put Oro in, I, I, my brain turns into mid range control. Like, Tamio yeah. is like, t like Psychic Frog can be both a tempo card and a control card. Um, yeah. in the sense that, I, so the way I could probably phrase it in a way that may, maybe helps is like it's efficient threats backed up with good removal and good counter magic. Like that's just. Yeah. Deck building 101. Like, we can pivot when we need to pivot. We have good answers. We've got good threats. Like, troll's still really good, folks. I, I yeah. hate to break it to you. Reanimating a troll's still very important. It will shift it the way it's built if grief gets banned, because right now I feel like it just loses to Beanstalk. Yes. Um, I don't think the deck can beat Beanstalk. No. Like, at all. Just there's too much value. Um, there's too much value. Yeah. And Beanstalk will come back a lot more oh, if grief... Oh, Sarah. Um, which, which is another thing, right? Like, if yep. you... If you ban grief, like we have to be looking at the beanstalk decks, we have to be looking at all of these other things, and it's going to be really hard to actually predict ahead of time what will be broken. Yeah, yeah. like and yeah, I mean, yeah. This I mean, is this is pretty hot. Like I'm just looking at this. It's just like you know, null drifter with dressed out. Hoo, hoo, hoo! Yeah. That's a spicy I mean, meter ball. Uh, it just it just feels so weird at the minute, because it feels like Legacy right now is something where I should actually be having a good time, right? Mm. Like, Painter actually has a pretty good matchup into Scam. Yeah. Um, Bomberman is having a resurgence, and I love Bomberman. Kanakan is still putting up results with the Painter builds that I usually play. Yeah, yeah, this is, like, me Painter. This yeah. is how I like to play Painter. Sarah is Kanakan um, pilt, 100%. Yeah. Cephalid Breakfast, folks. Nardu not also very good in Cephalid Breakfast. Who knew? Who knew mm -hmm. that this card is also bonkers in this deck? The kind of question there is like, do, do you need the breakfast part anymore? There like, is more mid rangey uh, versions of the deck. I've definitely seen like a more. There, I think it's. Uh, yeah, there's like a blue there's zenith. The one that, there's the one that um, like, got there in the showcase yeah, with yeah. Lawson um, that just. Yeah, like you get to just play blue zenith. Yeah. Um and do Nardu stuff. And it fundamentally feels very breakfast, but you don't have to play Cephalid Illusionist yeah, yeah. and the graveyard stuff. You can which just when do everyone stuff. else when everyone else is fighting over graveyard hate because rescam exists, yeah. it just... makes a lot more sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um it'll be interesting, like post a grief ban whether this deck has got legs yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i so for me i think that it should just be grief hashtag ban grief and i would keep an eye on the following cuts or like be cognizant of the following cuts orcish my masters let's not forget sarah the first six months of the year the amount of players who are moaning for an orcish bow masters ban was quite prevalent so, yep. bow man is. I disagreed with them the entire time. I also disagree with them too, but we have to be cognizant. Psychic frog. I want to see how but how powerful it truly is, or whether we, the format can adjust to play against it in in the world we're in. And mm -hmm. up the beanstalk. Yep, up the beanstalk. Is I the feel like one. these three cards. Nardu. I feel Nardu. I feel is. I actually think is the right power level for legacy. I actually think it's the right sure. power level. I think we have enough ways to deal with it in blast swords. But I think these three cards for me are there. People who are saying, like, reanimate, no. Folks, we've had reanimate since the start of the format. I hate to break it to you, reanimate's just a good magic card. All right, let's just stop, so, the, stop the reanimate let's, conversation. Let's talk about this. Because okay, I think this is an interesting subject, because I think it's actually just people have different ideas of what... Legacy is. Legacy is. No, yeah, that makes sense. So... I'm going to compare Legacy to another Eternal format. Um, we're going to compare Legacy to Pauper. Yes. And specifically the Pauper that existed 2015? I can't bring up 2015, Sarah. I got, I got... Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I, I remember it well. Okay. Um, let me actually get up exactly when it was. I'm going to play Pauper. Mm. Folks, if you want to play an Eternal format, can we recommend Pauper? 
Yeah, uh, so let's talk about like 2018 pauper. Oh, oh! So at this at the point of like 2018 pauper, mm-hmm. there were certain like pillars of the format. Yeah. Um, and there were quite a few of them. Like your meta game was kind of like you had your red deck, you had del you had two different types of Delver. Yep. You had mono blue and blue red. Yep. Um you had Boros Monarch. Yep. Was like the major mid range deck in the format. Then you had like Boggles, Mono Black Control, uh Turbo, um Turbo Angler yep. was a deck as well. You had the Ephemerate deck. Um and people were like, there are certain cards that just define what pulpit is. Correct. Right? In the same way that we, when people talk about reanimate, people will say, oh, you can't ban reanimate. It's part of what legacy is. Correct. Right? Now, one of those cards was Gush. Oh, well, Sarah. Sarah, my so, heart. Yeah. One Ooh. of those cards was Gush. And Gush was considered a pillar of what pulpit was. It was considered to be a card that you couldn't ban because it was what Pauper was. Oh, now, I unfortunately, me, <laughs> me, Green Prinny, and a few other Pauper grinders all worked out that this card, Tyler's Tribe, was really, really fucked I'm, up. I'm going to get up Tyler's Tribe for people who've never seen this card, because it's very good. This card, <laughs> this card with Gush. So, yeah, so Tyler's Tribe says, discard a card, uh, Tyler's Tribe gets plus 0, plus 4, and Tyler under 10. Not great by itself no um there was a card called inside out which makes a creature switch power and toughness so tyler's tribe discard five cards inside out is lethal by itself I just, I just 20 you and it's much easier to do that if you're picking up two lands with your gush and drawing two cards with your gush oh right that's immediately like enough cards yeah yeah but, like really hit we play like shadow rift so you can't block our guy that also draws a card essentially the entire deck was just a stack of cantrips uh four gush four circular logic four inside out four tyler's tribe four orgrove bolas some lands and some cantrips and I miss we just that. went I, lo- I love gush it's this yeah, it's, yeah. it's last bastion is vintage uh, yeah, it's as a-, a one-off in doomsday oh I love it, Gush. It, truly the mighty have fallen mm. in terms of Gush. Um, it used to be a vintage defining card. Mm-hmm. Um, too good. Some might say too good. People have called yeah. for his unrestriction of vintage, actually. And I, and I say to those people, Gush is busted. I, I say to those people, hell yeah, let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> I mean, Gush fastborn is actually bananas. Just like, Ooh. yeah. But, you know, fundamentally, like, what I'm saying is, like, Pauper had this thing as a pillar of what it was. Correct. And then people really pushed that pillar to its breaking point. Correct. Um, including me. <laughs> like, I played a lot of Tireless Tribe. I earned a lot of MTG tickets <laughs> playing Tireless Tribe. Um, and, you know, they they took out a pillar and Pauper is still fine. Pauper is still, like, a really interesting format. Yeah. It's really grown a lot. The Pauper format panel do an incredible job. Shout out. But that is, like, one of the most controversial ban decisions in Pauper's history. Yeah, the banning of Gush, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, we've established that formats can survive and can be good. Yeah, for a shaman. When their, you know, pillars are banned. I mean... In Legacy, Deathrite Shaman. But Sensei's Divining Top. Like, we've gone through those changes. The format survived. You know? Yep. Like, Deathrite Shaman is probably the biggest one, actually. Like, Top was obviously massive. Rip Top, but, you know. Def- Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman defined Legacy for such a long period. And yep. we have survived Deathrite Shaman. Um, yep. I just think that the argument of it's a pillar, this is what Legacy is about, doesn't always hold right True. because that, that's the general point i'm making is like i don't i want to make this clear i don't think reanimate should be banned no i don't think entomb should be banned i think having turbo reanimated decks exist in legacy is actually a very very good thing yeah however turn one grizzle I brand. think i just think if you're going to appeal to the logic of it's a pillar of the format it defines what legacy is I think you need more of an argument than just that. 
True. Because ultimately, Gush was what Pauper was. Yeah. And then Pauper banned it, and Pauper was fine. On the on that point, and I want to just summarize kind of what you said. I feel like if they come out, like they've said with Brainstorm days wasteland that it is a pillar I, again i don't want reanimate banned i think reanimate has been fine for many many years and it's absolutely fine but it is a systemic issue of like these new threats get printed and these old cards get more broken every single time like this isn't a we ain't uh, we ain't shoot you know we we fully acknowledge that like the the more powerful stuff gets the more these old cards get more punchy they need to be very upfront about what they think the identity of legacy is in the next ban ban and restricted. We can't just have a one paragraph like we've banned it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I need like I mean, even the Death Rush Shaman BNR was not amazing, but we need something like a good two, three paragraphs on how you view legacy, what it's gonna look like, what you're keeping an eye on, so we as a community feel that you have our format under control. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, then I am starting to get worried. Yeah. It feels more of a crisis of faith than anything else. Yeah. It's just, it's felt like terrible optics. Like yeah. when they, the last BNR, when they decided not to ban things, and they said that it came out that their legacy specialist had said they should ban grief, and then they didn't. I, I want to know who their legacy specialist is for first. <laughs> they're it, not, they're never going to tell us. But it's just one of those things that where it's like, even if that's true. I kind of wish you didn't tell us. No, just like, if you'd have just been like, we're not banning grief because we don't have enough data, don't say anything else. Absolutely fine. Yeah. Sure. But now you have more data than you can shake a stick at. My theory is, oh my God, we haven't got enough data. I'm like, Habibi, look at the numbers. Just look at the numbers. You have more numbers than we have. And we can tell you it's bad. I Yeah, my, my, my two cents on this is I don't think we should be having a sweeping like five card change because what happens? You then don't know what was good. Right, Sarah, I have brought up the legacy ban list. Okay? Yep. Now, take out all the cards that say vintage cards. Is there anything from the legacy ban list that we can unban? Because something that some players have said is if you're going to ban stuff, give us something back. Give us <laughs> something back. We can then play with it, all right? Now, my two cents, okay? My two cents on this. I'm going to make this bigger so people can see. Survival of the fittest is okay. All right? Probably fine. Probably fine. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. All right? There's one that I kind of don't want unbanned, but I think could be unbanned. What, Hermadrid? Oh, uh, no. It's Sensei's Divining Top. Oh, what? God, you're going to... Sarah, why did you say that? The Miracles Cabal are kind of come for us. All so... Right? Hi, Miracles players. I hate your death. But I, I I, agree with the general point that I think the logic for the top ban no longer applies. Which is like, I, slow play? Yeah, I don't... I think the way the games go now with, like, Yorian decks and such, like, we're already there again. Yeah. And things are fine. Legacy is mostly an online format now where that doesn't matter. Correct. Um, Just, it's... I yeah, like I can I can get behind them getting their sensors to find top. Back. Do, you, do you want an, a saga gamer to get top with so, their saga? No, no, I do not. I will hate it. However, I think my personal preferences about the format should not define. Not true. So top is probably fine. This has been flirted with, and I think no. it's still too good. No, no, no. exactly. No. I'm with you. no. No. Oh, no, I'm moving to. Okay, I'm going to address one elephant in the room, Sarah, and it's the people who say they don't want death right unbanned. I'm like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. No, you don't. What will happen? There'll be four death right shaman, four DRC, and four Delver secrets, and a and psychic frog or uh, orcish bowmasters, and everyone will move on with it. Like Grixis Delver will build itself. All right, we do not need to give Grixis Delver any more work to have. To. And then the only other one, Sarah, that I'm going to add is Earthcraft because I think Earthcraft is. Frankly, it's too slow for the format. So you can just unban it, we can move on with our lives, and everything is fine. I think the only card me and you, Sarah, are kind of open to is maybe top. Alright? And even then, I don't think that's going to change anything. Uh, top survival. Earthcraft, probably fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it adds anything. No. It's the same thing with, like, Mind Twist, where I don't actually think it really adds anything to the format. Even if it would be fine. Oh, Yogmoth's right? Bargain, also fine. Yogmoth's Bargain, absolutely fine. No one ever going to play it. Like... Just 
play necro dominance if you're going to play your boss bug. I, I want to see the return of like fair necro lusts. Like I've really been enjoying the little like magic I have been playing has mostly been modern playing fair necro dominance. Yeah, but necro potence yeah. is a lot more spicy. The you, can't, you, can't, you can't get first Necropo. No. Like, no, no, Necropo no. is, it's too is good. fundamentally... Yeah, it's an extremely skill-testing card. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Like, the good players will love it, the bad players will die to it. Um, but it is... I don't... I don't, I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, I'm with you on this one. I think the main thing for us is I think that we are understandably frustrated... We can come out of this better, a bit more measured, perhaps. And I think Legacy will be fine. It's just a month, everyone. I know I have lost a bit of trust like everyone else has, but I still love my format and I want my format to grow. And if people actually truly care about Legacy and Eternal formats thriving and growing, I hope Wizards also want to give that attention to it. And this announcement really felt like it wasn't that. And that to me hurt. That obviously stings. But I <laughs> have always known that my eternal format isn't the number one factor for them. So was I surprised? No. Was I a bit disappointed? Yes. Do I think Legacy will come back stronger? Yes. I know what you think, Sarah, but closing thoughts before we wrap this up uh i think that unfortunately until it gets fixed i'm mostly playing other card games uh, Just... and it's kind of annoying because when i think about the next competitive season um as well as like magic mm. i'm genuinely considering being on the flesh and blood pro tour grind instead of the magic pro tour grind yeah which is a very very weird place for me to be frankly because also Fun fact, Flesh and Blood Twitter is also complaining that their game is broken. The difference is, Flesh and Blood, they just had a ban announcement that actually banned some things. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, I get you. It's just, yeah, it's a bit... We're in, a, like, a crisis of faith around how the format is managed at yeah. the minute. Where there's been conversation about Wizards looking after our format and, you know, taking the time and the attention, even if it's not a lot, there's still good custodians of looking after it. This is the first time where I feel that that has been tested. Yeah, I really feel like wizards need to look at what they consider a large legacy event and really... Tell us. Because right now, the way they've an they announced that, it feels kind of almost disrespectful to some of the big community event makers. Mm -hmm. And... That's not good, because those people are the heart of the game in general. They don't Correct. just run legacy events. They run modern events, pioneer events, yeah, and everything these in between. Are people who really keep magic alive, keep organized play going. Correct. And I think those people need to be treated with a lot of respect by wizards in Correct. general. And I think in some cases they're doing well. Um, I think... But then again, all these kind of um, organizers are now getting approached by like Ravensburger for Lorcana. Mm -hmm. They're getting approached by Legend Story Studios for Flash and Blood. Yeah. And it's starting to feel like magic is starting to fall a bit behind in terms of organized play. Um, and that's worrying because I feel like one of the biggest draws of magic was how good organized play was mm -hmm. for such a long time. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything to say. I actually just feel quite pessimistic, and I'm trying not to be. Yeah. I um, I am disappointed, but I understand. And now that's like, I, I think that's honestly a little bit worse. At least with pessimism, you can kind of be like, look, I think it's, you know, there's, you at least are being considered in your pessimism. I am trying to hold on to some level of hope. But mm -hmm. let's go into the wide. Folks, tell us what you think in the comments down below. Um, we'll be back with uh, our scheduled Legacy content uh, through better or for worse. We're going to keep enjoying playing Legacy. We're going to enjoy bringing the content for you that we still love. And I think even though we're not playing as much as we should, we, in our heart of hearts, actually still love Legacy. Uh, even if we are, you know, a little bit lamenting of our format at the moment. But as always, if you've got this far, like, share and subscribe. We'll continue making more magic content. But until next time, it is a goodbye from me. It is a goodbye from Sarah. Bye. Bye.